In this demonstration, we're going to show using Fiddler for HTTP performance testing. When testing performance, the first thing you probably want to do is clear your temporary internet files and clear your cookies. This will ensure that there's nothing in the Internet Explorer cache that's going to affect your test. You can clear your session list. Here I hit Control X to clear it. And then you can actually just open your web page in Internet Explorer that you're looking to test. In this case, let's test Office's website. Internet Explorer opens, and as you can see, there's quite a few downloads. So the Performance Statistics tab can show you a lot of important information about performance. So if we select all of the sessions, I hit Control A here, we can see that this home page request is made up of 67 requests accounting for 422,000 bytes received. If we were to chart this data, we can see that a very significant portion of this is JavaScript, as well as some HTML, some GIF files, some CSS, a fair, fair amount of overhead from headers, and uh, a little bit of JPEG. And then from here you can also see that there's some other things that didn't have a measurable impact, like the icon, the fav icon, and so forth. You can copy this chart if you'd like, put it in a performance report. So if we're to look at this data, some other things come out. You can see the average uh, performance for a modem. So you can see, on average, the round trip cost. That is to say, the amount of time that's spent simply contacting the server and awaiting a response, because of the large number of requests, is about 6.7 6 seconds. So from a modem on the west coast talking to the servers, assuming they're in Redmond, Washington, is about 6.7 seconds of round trip. And the elapsed time, including all of the time required to transfer the data at modem speeds, is about 83 seconds. Now, as you can see, with a modem or with a high speed DSL, these times are proportionally shorter. But as you start to go overseas and so forth, you'll see longer times and longer delays. One of the important links that I want to show you right here is this is a link to a paper written about how Internet Explorer does caching. This is very relevant for the topic at hand because your cache performance is one of the most important things that you can tune in order to have a high performing website. So if we were to actually expand out these sessions so that you can see the full list, one of the most important things you want to look for is whether or not there's any caching headers on your responses. In this case, the Office Online site does quite, quite a lot of caching, so that you'll see, um, while some of the files have no cache and expires equals negative one, meaning they should be re-downloaded immediately, in other cases, there's cache control max age of 2768400. So basically what this does, if we, if we were to go look at our session inspector, uh, in our response session inspectors down here, we have a caching. And basically, this will pull out the caching headers in a way that's a little more readable. In this case, what it's saying is essentially that this file may be cached for 2,678,400 milliseconds. So I believe that works out to something reasonable, uh, some number of minutes. In a future version of this inspector, I'll probably actually do the math for you. But when you're looking at your site, you'll very often see that there's actually no caching headers at all. And when there's no caching headers, Internet Explorer has to perform some heuristic algorithms to determine whether or not a response is cacheable. The details of those algorithms, again, are, are located at the link that's provided here. But in general, your best bet is to provide explicit caching, caching information. So, in addition to doing the, the due diligence around making sure that your requests are cached and minimizing the number of requests, obviously this page could be made faster if it didn't require so many images, one of the other things you want to investigate is your use of compression. So compression is a mechanism that enables the server to compress the response and the browser will automatically decompress it. Internet Explorer, Firefox, and other browsers support two major types of compression, deflate compression and gzip compression. Fiddler allows you to tweak your performance and see whether or not this would make a big difference. So let's pick the largest file in immediate view. This is a, a JavaScript file, which if you look at it, contains quite a lot of information about you know, everything that this page wants to do. So this is a 123 kilobyte file. Well, if we were to actually gzip compress that file, you can find that we've gone to 25,000 bytes. So that's actually about an 80% compression ratio just for compressing the file. 
So as you can imagine, you're going to get dramatically better performance if you use HTTP compression. One of the, the things that you can do with Fiddler is you can clear the session list, you can clear your cache, you can clear your cookies, and you can then set a performance rule which will uh, do any number of things. In this case, one of the things we'd like to do is simulate modem speeds. So what this will do is it will actually change the speed at which Fiddler transfers data to and from the browser and the server. So if we go to our Office Online page here and we actually perform a reset, we're going to see a dramatically different experience than we would have seen otherwise. In this case, we're going to see these files downloading very slowly because it's, this is simulating the performance of a 56k modem. And so you'll see in particular that large JavaScript file, which we had downloaded previously before we cleared our cache, is now downloading much more slowly than it would have otherwise. So this is actually a very useful tool in order to determine how your site will perform from a remote locale or a low-speed link without actually requiring that you have a low-speed link available to you. Now, these rules options are actually exposed in the rules file. So you can edit the rules file by clicking Customize Rules, or in this case, I've got the Rules tab extension installed. The Rules tab extension just puts your Fiddler script rules into a tab. And so in this case, you can see all of the different rules. And specifically, here's one, which is simulate modem speeds, which we saw up on the menu. What this does, actually, is it just sets a Boolean flag for simulate modem. If you then scroll down to the on before request and on before response, you'll see simulate modem actually will cause a request trickle delay, which tells Fiddler that it, it delays 300 milliseconds per KB that's uploaded. So this assumes that you're testing on a fast uh, network where network latency is not a problem. If you're testing over a modem, obviously choosing simulate modem isn't going to do anything helpful for you. In this case, and then in the response, we see that we're going to simulate modem, we're going to delay the response by uh, 150 milliseconds per KB downloaded. This is representative of the fact that most modems have significantly faster download speeds than upload speeds. So let's actually clear out our, our, our session here. Check out some of the other rules in the performance menu. Another rule in the performance menu is the disable caching rule. What this does is it prevents Internet Explorer from, well, it prevents the server from sending any response headers that cause caching on the client. This is a good way of testing what is the worst case performance, assuming the user was not actually caching anything on the client. Another option is show time to last byte. What this will do is it'll, in the custom, let's actually uncheck the simulate modem speeds, and let's actually choose show time to last byte and show response timestamp. What these two rules do is they actually fill in additional data in the user defined column. So if we're to open a site, say live.com, you'll see that over in the user defined column you can now see the, the amount of time that passed between the request and the last byte of the response. So in the home page case it's only 62 milliseconds, which is quite fast. The response timestamp, in this case 11 or almost 11 p.m., is just a good mechanism if you're trying to correlate this data with other logs that you may have available to you. Now as you can see here again, there's max age headers that are effective in ensuring that requests are cached. Now the interesting thing that you can do is you can actually see what changes. So this is the first load time when there's nothing in the cache. So let's actually highlight this. So in this case I'm going to select the sessions and push control 1 which simply bolds them in red. And then I'm going to launch live.com again in a new browser instance. You can see in this case live.com actually only downloaded three files because all of these other files were effectively cached. This shows you as you can see, if we look at our performance statistics, you can see that in this case, on the revisit, we only downloaded 9,500 bytes, whereas on the first visit, we downloaded about 27 KB. So in this case, by using caching effectively, we've, only, we've saved about 66% of our HTTP traffic time. So that's obviously one of your best bets.
So there's obviously many other things that you can do to improve your HTTP performance. The most important, of course, is ensuring that your requests are getting cached effectively, you're not sending too many files down for a particular web page, you're using appropriately sized graphics for your content, you're using HTTP compression if it's available, and several others that don't come to mind at the immediate moment. In this case, one of the other things that's kind of interesting to do is you can actually force gzip compression. What, what forcing compression allows you to do is compare your, your performance. So if we were to clear our cache and go back to the Office Online page in Internet Explorer, we're going to see how much data is transferred if all of it had been compressed. And this will compress any of the images, the CSS, or sorry, not the images, but it will compress any of the CSS and HTML and so forth. So, I, oops, wrong URL, office.microsoft.com. So let's remove this traffic from live. And let's select all of the traffic. So you can again see that we're seeing 600, or 65 HTTP requests for this site. But now, we're only receiving about 175 kilobytes. So that's a savings of about 300 kilobytes. So if Office Online uses compression, then you're going to save a lot of data transfer. In this case, one of the things that's an interesting and an artifact of Microsoft's corporate network is our corporate proxies actually strip out compression. Office Online is one of the most effective sites in using compression. So let's turn off this rule. So for the moment, we'll call that a good, simple, large video about testing performance using Fiddler. In the future, we'll create some micro videos that explain more specific aspects of, of HTTP performance.